What's up, y'all? You know what it is. Street Knowledge Podcast back in full effect. Y'all rolling with your boy, Big Boosie. This is the things that I do, man. I'm back, man. Back. Make sure y'all subscribe, share, hit that notification. Hit them likes, man. Show us some love, man. Let's keep it rolling. Hit the cash app. Now, let's keep this thing rolling for y'all, man. I want to go ahead and get into some things. Well, I want to start off saying R.I.P. to Jerry Springer. One of the greatest talk show um, on that on on our planet to be. He was actually one that had Oprah beat in a lot of states, which was not easy to do. So, you know, Jerry gonna be missed, even though they stopped his show in 2018. But you know, the reruns is running around and all that. His legacy still gonna live on. I always like Jerry. Jerry always was a Look like, you know, Jerry was a people person, man. Look like he had, you know, he had all walks of life on his show. All type of people, all type of different things, man. So, you know, um, he's one of them, them people you could really call the GOAT of talk show. And he definitely going to be missed. I remember he had a friend of mine, a female from Durham. She was on there acting like she was gay and was in a gay relationship and was cheating on her gay girlfriend. And you know, she told me about it. They paid her a couple uh, a couple stacks to actually take on that character, basically. And you know, we laughed about it and all that. But it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was cool, man. I, I, I like the Jerry Springer show, man. I don't know if it'll ever be duplicated. But, uh, you know, he created his boy Steve show. Steve came up off of it, which is a good thing. I always sit and watch Steve's show. It's kind of similar, you can tell. He looks rigged up with certain things, and sometimes it's not. So, RP to our boy Jerry Springer, man. And um, condolences out to his family. They say he, he died a peaceful death at home. So, that was a good thing. That he left us the way he wanted to be, uh, the way he wanted to leave this earth. You know, excuse me. So yeah, I want to get into some things, man. Um, it's it's sad out here with this domestic violence stuff, man. I don't know what kind of man will consider himself being a man to overpower a woman. And want to take their life for their own reasons. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Even with women. But I'm more so, so speaking to the men. Because the men do it more than anything. Because they want to feel in control. And mainly they be weak. Those be the most weak ones. They, they come outside. They won't fight a man like that. They don't be tough. They only tough with the women. And beat their woman behind closed doors, scaring them to not go and, uh, you know, seek help. Tell them, I'll kill your family member if you tell somebody, things of that nature. And, you know, they got hotlines for it. So, you know, any women out there listening to this, please take advantage of them hotlines. Don't be believing that the guy will hurt your family. And if so, put them on point to be on point. And just figure out a way to actually get a break hold, get a, you know, get away from that actual situation. I know it's rough and tough because a guy could be sitting in the dark somewhere in the trenches and harm your mother, your father, your kids, your uncles, your loved ones. I know it's tough, but better you somewhere than sitting right there being a sitting duck. And, you know, it's signs when a, when, a, when a guy does that, man. It's, it's signs. Y'all actually go check out the film that my homeboy, uh, Terry D., he wrote and directed it with the help of his team. Um, it's called um, 17 Days. I was glad to be a part of it, to assist in every way that I could. 
because it, it, it's about helping the women and it's a film to show women and it and it's it's real graphic and y'all can't be mad at my boy Mark his name is Mark Mark Shacks he plays the uh the guy Damian I believe that's his name the actual boyfriend but he had to play that role to the T so y'all will understand the real significance of the reason why this film was made if he didn't act real good the way he did, y'all wouldn't have felt this part. Y'all wouldn't even felt the impact that this movie really holds. It's on Tubi, 17 days the movie. And so, you know, after a person play their role, they actually looked at as that person when they're out in the real world, when they're not actually working on film. So yeah, he's, he's not that type of guy. Um, But y'all need to check that film out because domestic violence is serious, man. So any women that is not going through it, you know anybody that's going through it, and you, and you can try to talk them out of it, you know, try and stay on their case about it. Because we lost a lot of sisters behind it. We lost a lot of their family members behind it. Lost a lot of their, when they move on, they get with a new guy, he don't even see it coming, and the guy come out of nowhere take both of their lives, or if not, all three of their lives. That's not fair, that's some coward, coward stuff for anybody to do to anybody. Take somebody's life and then it's a wrap, or take somebody's life and then you know you're going to jail. That's stupid. Or try to take the woman's life and she don't die. Fortunately, that's good. She make it, but the guy, you would be in jail and she's going to be with somebody anyway. So what victory is that? So I, I, I understand that's probably part of mental health reasons. And some guys just do it for the the uh, reasons of control. To be in control, they feel powerful. They feel, you know, they, you know, they feel like they the big man. They can poke their chest out. They got the woman going to listen to them and, and be around them in fear. I wouldn't want no woman around me every day in fear of me. What, what y'all get out of that? That's stupid. As soon as you get in jail, you're looking stupid. Somebody end up taking your life in there. So I want to get into something I, I spoke about. Um, one of my partners. Um, her name is Shadira. We have a podcast. I told y'all, go check out our podcast, The Shadira Effect. It's on YouTube. Um, she about to be coming with a lot of things of domestic violence and, you know, human trafficking. And she's going to have a lot of other topics that relates to women and the things y'all go through. And she's going to touch on a little different than other people and bring awareness to this human trafficking because a lot of people are already hitting her up. She got a trailer out on her page, the Shadira Effect. Y'all go check it out. Y'all see what she talking about and why she even created her YouTube channel moving forward to actually help women that's going through domestic violence to actually give the women courage to stand up and fight when a man thinking they got them somewhere suppressed and not wanting to, you know, get out of that situation. So she's taking a stand for that and it'll encourage other people that know people that's going through it to say, no, you're not going to stand to the side and, and watch that keep happening. You're going to sit and help. So that's what her uh, podcast is about. But I want to get into a little deeper with you guys if y'all don't know what she actually went through with her sister. Sister is Crystal Chanel, who's living in South Carolina. And uh, actually, um, hold on one second. Her 
child's father, her sister's child's father, they was together as a couple, supposed to have threw her sister in the trunk. And her nine-year-old son seen it and told the police, and the police didn't react on it. And they found the car burned up. And nothing happened to the guy. He didn't get arrested until Shadira and her family and the team got together and started going down there complaining and got the news involved and everything. And that's when they kind of took place of doing any type of justice. And once the guy burnt his car, the, 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 there's no, I thought you get, it's an arsenal charge for just burning up stuff like that just because. I don't know, I guess it gotta be a house or a building or something. But if you burn your own car up, that's not against the law because he didn't get arrested for that. So, and her sister haven't, still haven't been found. But this is a post she put up. I'm going to read to you guys on her on her um, Facebook page. Y'all can go and follow her Facebook page as well. It's Shadira Nicole Lee. Shadira Nicole Lee. New Jersey's finest weavologist. Um, so... This is what she starts off saying. And this was back in September. And then I'm going to catch all the speed up to speed with what's going on today. It says, so apparently it's not against the law to kidnap someone black and put them in the trunk of a car. And it's also not against the law to set your vehicle on fire. Just say you were in a crack house and your car was stolen. Okay, so I guess he used that as an excuse. His car was stolen. So mind you, this is September the 18th, 2022. She put this up, which is not too long ago. And then it goes, 29 days later, and my sister Crystal Chanel is still missing. She was heard screaming while being put in the trunk of Tony Berry's car, which is the boyfriend, husband, whatever he is, Witnessed by her nine-year-old son, Aiken County Sheriff's Office was very insensitive and uncaring about my sister's disappearance from the very beginning and totally disregarded our family cries for help. Even still, they don't have this man picture on the news. They are not even looking for this man or considering him a person of interest, even after finding his vehicle that was set on fire. However... If my sister was a white woman, there would be all kind of warrants for his arrest and his face would have been on every news station as a wanted man. There would be all kind of man hunts and cadaver dogs looking for him. And my missing sister, if she was a white woman, this man is dangerous. This man is dangerous and have hurt several women. He is demonic and practice demonic rituals. He needs to be found ASAP. It's sad that a hurting family have to do law enforcement's job. The only way we are going to find my missing sister is to find the evil man who took her away from us. Please share. I need this man picture everywhere. Someone please come forward. 10K reward for anyone that can lead us to my sister. I'm not giving up until I find my sister. So this is the guy. And that's her sister. Hold on, excuse me, guys. That's the guy and that's her sister. Make sure y'all can see that. So that was on, you know, the uh, September 18th. Then she was basically doing their own investigation. So she's saying, OK, 
Okay, before I read it, these is she be saying these demonic, and these is candles found in one of his crack houses with her sister name on them and date of birth, like some type of ritual. So I'm gonna read what she said, and they, I guess they was going, her and her family members was going around looking for him. Going to all the houses that they know him to be in, and crack houses and, and things, and went there and found things with their sister name, with her sister's name on it, and date of birth, some type of ritual stuff going on in there on those candles. Y'all gotta go follow, and you can pull the uh, pictures up a little bigger. But Tony Berry is an evil demonic. These are the candles found in one of his abandoned trailers. Do as I say. With my sister's name and birthday, and they are burned all the way out. We found cards that read, protect Tony and what he is about to do. His sister, mom, and son are all involved. Please, if you know something, please tell if you live around these people. They are dangerous. I'm not into witchcraft, but I know a devil when I see one, and that's a Tony Berry. People keep saying Roots is real. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. But what I know is, for some reason, this man is untouchable to the point law enforcement interrogated him for hours and didn't record it. I know there is an eyewitness that heard my sister screaming and my sister being put in a trunk. And this man ain't even considered a person of interest by law enforcement. Something ain't right. Deep down in the South, and something ain't right with Aiken County Sheriff's Department. If you know anything, please help bring my sister home and get these demons off the streets. So that was in September 12th, 2022. So now I'm going to go up to date. Mind you, his son supposedly had helped him. after the fact clean up things about the murder or help to move the body around or whatever so this is him with the son and that's her and him at the bottom but him and his son up at the top his son looked like the one with the blonde hair I believe so this is this is what's going on now. So the son was on house arrest with a band on his leg. So I'm gonna read to y'all what's going on right now. So Tony Berry's son, Darius Berry, was granted the removal of his ankle monitor. Darius Berry is being charged with accessory to murder after the fact, and he was originally given a $20,000 bond and restricted to an ankle monitor versus going to jail. He appeared in, a, in court a few weeks ago pleading to remove his monitor for personal reasons, and because he can't afford to pay $75 a week. I guess that I guess that pays for the for the uh, bracelet. Better that than go to jail, basically. But he's saying he can't afford it. So now she goes on to say, another slap in the face for us. His monitor removal was granted. This pisses me off. Personally, due to the fact we were already failed by Aiken County from the very beginning and throughout the time we were searching for my sister. Not only did Darius lie to law enforcement several times, but he tried so hard to befriend me. So he tried to befriend her. He Once it got out that they was looking for him, the son was still acting like he's cool with Shadira when she get down there looking for her sister. 
and he was acting like he was help, helping them, knowing that he was part of hiding the body. So he was up under them, getting information and feedback to his father or whoever else was down with it. But she said he tried so hard to befriend me, to manipulate me into thinking he was on my side and he was trying to help us find Crystal. When he knew what his father had done and at some point he helped him. He can't afford $75 for the ankle bracelet, but here we are struggling financially due to the evil acts of him and his father. And when she say that, you know, she spent a lot of her hard-earned money, savings and everything, paying for private investigators and having people help. Like, she spent a lot of money because the police wasn't doing their job down there. So, um, him and his fall kid. Now, she going to say, this is why domestic violence slash murder is at an all time high because the abusers and those who help and protect the abusers are getting slaps on the wrist. Yeah, and they send drug dealers to jail for 30, 40, 50 years and don't even find drugs on them. And go for what somebody say ASAP. But they don't go for what somebody say when somebody got put in a trunk. Come on, man. That's crazy. Like, stop it. He is just as guilty as Tony, which is his father, and should be as miserable and depressed as possible, just like we are. He knew better and had no remorse until he realized what they had done was starting to unfold. And then he so-called tried to help us by offering a bunch of lies. The nerve of him. At least he has the option to be home with his family with the monitor on. We will never get to spend time with Crystal again. Hell, we can't even get closure. She is still missing. We don't care what he can't afford. We can't afford half the hardships we've been through financially. And let's not talk about emotionally and mentally. But we are forced to push through it. This is so disappointing. Now see, if this ain't crazy, man. That they would let... Because he told them that he couldn't afford it. And he got a child on the way and things of that nature. That he get a pat on the back and say, all right, you can't afford $75. You, you out on bail, we, right, we'll still be lenient. And take you off of the ankle monitor. What kind of effed up stuff is that, man? Somebody, sister gone, mother is gone, daughter is gone, due to the hands of this little young guy? And they're gonna let him take a monitor off and they let him stay in the house? Like there's nothing, they let him stay at home that's crazy, man. That's crazy. He should go back to prison if he can't spend that $75. Especially due to the fact you knew what you was doing when you did it. And a, life, a real human being life is gone. And she got kids. That them people got to explain where their mother is. At some point in time. And the court. A judge would let this man go home. Because he can't afford $75. So the people that's in jail right now. That might got kids on the way. Or kids out there. Why they sitting in jail. Waiting to see a judge. Why you don't let them go home. Skip the bail. Let them go home. What kind of stuff is that?
Yo, I don't know what's going on in the court system out here, but something ain't right. We got to tighten up, man. We got to figure out what to do with our judges. With our prosecutors. But yeah, y'all make sure y'all go follow a page, man. Uh um a Facebook page and go on the YouTube channel and follow the Shadira effect and let us know what y'all think, man. I had to touch on this subject. Domestic violence is is really getting out of control and and why it's out of control because our law enforcement is not putting pressure on that. So, I don't know. We got to take a stance and make a stance, man. So, and make sure y'all go on her page and get her uh, GoFundMe because, you know, they need help to continue this journey, man. To actually, uh, excuse me, pay for... Um, you know, other services that's needed to to get justice for her sister. And y'all just showing some love, man. And I'll be back. It's your boy Big Boosie. Street Knowledge Podcast. See y'all in a sec.